If I had a favorite Angel Dust line, it's probably, Not now, fat nuggets. Hi, I'm Kristen Maldonado from Pop Culture Planet. It's so great to see you guys again after last night's premiere. You guys killed it. This is this show is so awesome. I'm like so excited for everyone to see it. Um, but I'm curious because, you know, this is a unique one where like there is a, pl a pilot that exists. So it's sort of like you are creating original characters, but also like people have seen some of it already. So like, I'd love to hear how you kind of like found your character, like what work you did and like how you found the voices for them as well. So I watched a little bit of the pilot um, before I auditioned. Um, and then when I got it, I watched the whole pilot one time and have not seen it since. Um, and, you know, like I'm just approaching it as, you know, the same way that like the, you know, anyone who plays an iconic character does, right? Like there's been like 50 Batmans, right? And so, you know, I, I don't think that when you play Batman, you look at all of the other Batmans and go, how am I going to make mine different? You work with the director and Vivian and, and Richard, the, the voice director were, you know, they were so, so hands-on and, 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 and um, communicative uh, in the booth that um, that it was really just about creating the character with them. You know what I mean? Um, as opposed to referring to anything that's happened before. Um, and, uh, and I, I, they, they were great. And it was, it was such a fantastic experience with them that I felt really great about it. I think Nifty is like, she, she flies a little more under the radar, so there's more room to play. And I think like, um, a lot of times what ends up happening is I think I get cast based off of just my regular speaking voice. And so, <laughs> um, I, you know, I played around with it and just added kind of a demonic spin and they're like, yes, that's it. <laughs> yes, I and love honestly, it. They, they did a lot of amazing stuff with animating her. So that really brought her to life too. Her eye is so expressive. <laughs> so expressive. For me, I mean, I, when I first auditioned for it, um, I I sent off the MP3, and then I just went into a deep dive of anything I could has been. And I, I think when I watched the pilot specifically. I probably watched it like about five different five times in a row, you know, and I, because I loved it. There was nothing there was nothing like this that I had ever seen before. And in terms of bringing um, my own interpretation to Angel Dust, I, I think, um, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest perspective that you have to have toward something that uh, something like the pilot, which is the reason any of this is happening. Um, and for such a long time was such a, a heart place for all the fans, you know, because it was really the only like material that they could interact with and they could watch for such a long time. I mean, the first step for me was, OK, how can I respect, you know, what what came before uh, before me and how can I step into this? And once I, I understand that. It's a matter of, OK, how can I trust what I have to bring to it? Right. You know, I'm different people are different people. And uh, when I step into the role, obviously, it's going to inherently be a different thing. So trusting my own individual voice and what I have to bring inherently to the table just, you know, as a baseline um, was it was a huge uh, step to take. Um, so then, you know, getting into the actual studio with the creative team, with Viv, uh, who is so specific in terms of, OK, we need this for this scene, but do your thing, you know, add yourself to it, add your whimsy to to the role and to the story. And um, she just kind of let us go hog wild, you know, in, in, in whatever way we thought was was best for us. And then she'd contain it when, you know, she needed to. Fans are so excited about Husker Dust. What can you tell us <laughs> about that relationship? Yeah, not, it's not uh, happening. It, guys, it's not happening. Give it up. Huh. Uh -huh, I've never uh -huh. heard Husker it's Dust. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But Husker does, you know, obviously I can't give anything away, um, <laughs> but uh, it is uh, to me, I love that. That's probably one of my favorite ships, you know, I um, mm -hmm. recently did a deep dive online of like all all the shipping of the characters. And apparently, Amir, there is a 
Alistair Angel Dust ship um, oh, really? possibility. Mm. Yes, there is. I but which is one. it's interesting though because I think Viv's come out and said that Alistair is is asexual. Yeah. So a, would it be possible? Would it not be? I don't know. Let's see and find well, out. How anything's possible? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I love the idea of a Husker Dust um ship but uh i have um nothing more i can say on that i know you got to finally see like the first three episodes all together so i was wondering if you had a favorite line or scene that you've seen so far um whether it's yours or someone else's i know one of mine is definitely um nifty doing her trust fall <laughs> <That's pain. laughs> She's wild, yeah. I mean, honestly, my favorite moment of Nifty, like in the script and also how it played out was her shooting the commercial and, you know, just completely blanking, but thinking she nailed it. That's like, <laughs> I don't know what they did with it. It's so fucking funny to me. Um, <laughs> highly enjoyable i i honestly think my favorite line is is one of nifty's too i mean i, I last night i couldn't stop telling kamiko like just how fucking funny <laughs> um nifty <laughs> is to me but um but probably the line where she says that she kills mother bugs in front of their children um as a statement <laughs> that's just <laughs> it really kills me but if i had a favorite angel dust line it's probably not now fat nuggets yeah when he's yeah yeah pig. yeah <laughs> Yeah. What about you, Amir? I can't. I can't tell you because my favorite. Uh, it happens toward the end of the finale. Oh, sorry. All right, we'll keep an eye out. And and just final thoughts. What about a has been hotel musical on Broadway? Would you do it? You know, yeah. the facts would have to be right. <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd do it. I, it'd be it'd be a hell of a lot of puppeteering. I think we start with a has been hotel concert performance where we do just all right. the songs like in a really uh. great music venue, right? Mm -hmm. With all these incredible Broadway performers and build from yeah. there. I want tickets to that. 100%. It'd be it'd be a crazy thing to see. It really would. Oh, right? I'd be interested to know how how it would go down. I you know what actually speaks to me more so than like Broadway, like a stage adaptation, is something like Sleep No More. You know, where you walk into a, a warehouse and and the entire uh, hellscape could be in there in some format. You know that I that I feel. That. Yeah, Blake, outside the cool. box. I like world. it. <laughs> That'd yeah. be cool. Immersive, immersive. Yeah. All right. Hollywood. We're pitching this <laughs> yeah. for season two. Let's do it. Oh, I love that. That would be awesome. Well, yeah. I want to thank you all so much for your time and congratulations. I know everyone's going to love this show. Consider subscribing if you like my videos. And if you want to talk more TV and movies with me outside of the comments section, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kmaldo. If you like this one, you can check out more of my videos right over here. See ya!